for so much of my life, I'm spending time with um, historical women and I'm wondering about their power. Where did they draw their strength from to deal with the kinds of strains that they had? When we lived on a ranch and we're building our ranch, um, I remember sitting thinking at one point, at some point we will have running water and at some point we will have electricity and at some point we will not be hauling water from town and we will have a phone you know in and all those sorts of things and we won't be living in a trailer with three dogs and two cats or I won't be here I mean that was just sort of a given but the women that I write about never had that luxury of knowing oh it'll get better um, they had to either make it better or find a way to live with what they had and given the circumstances and the history of so many of them, I really wondered how they did that. So I just want to um, share with you a few, five words that, um, that I think might help grasp what it was that might have helped these women have the power to keep going um, in a hard time. And, and hopefully these are things that maybe we can incorporate in our own lives. Um, and the first one is, and they're all, you know, they're going to spell the letter power or the word power because I'm getting old and I can remember that maybe, even though I can't remember Diamond Ring. But um, <laughs> So the first letter is P and, it, and it's passion. And what I found with almost every one of these women that I've researched, that there was a passion in their life, a commitment that they made that sustained them and was part of who they were and who their character was. And that passion helped them return to it when things got tough and helped them shape you know, the kinds of responses they had to the challenges that they were given. Um, it might have been the, you know, passion for family. I think for this woman, Eliza Spaulding, um, this story kind of begins when she's 15 and she marries uh, quite young. She marries at 17 and, um, and she doesn't necessarily marry wisely, but she's also trying to understand what happened with her family and after everything, after the massacre, how their whole lives changed. All the missionaries' lives changed. And many of them were uh, moved and came to actually Forest Grove, Oregon. That's where a large group of them settled. Because the mission board back in Ohio said if, if d they couldn't distinguish that there were different tribes and so in their mind they had been attacked and these people needed to head, um, head to safe ground. And the British actually paid the ransom for the, for the hostages because Oregon didn't have a tax base. Um, even then, we argued about taxes and things like that, and we didn't have an army, and, and so, um, so as she gets older, she marries and has two young girls, and she's really struggling with how to, um, you know, how to make her family hold together, because there are a lot of stresses and challenges, and it was her passion for keeping her family alive, and as you, as I read her memoir, which she wrote when she was quite elderly, it was family that really mattered. It was connecting to her own mother and father and how to live a life that she felt was going to be honoring to them and also something she could pass on to the strength of her own children. Um, the second word is to be open. And that's probably the most difficult, one of the most difficult things many of us have, that we get sort of sort of centered or down the aisle of what it is we think should happen in our life, the way things are. And it's hard to be open to the possibility of new, of new ideas, the possibility of new resources, um, the possibility that you might have to make a change, because most of us have a hard time with change. Mm -hmm.